Good morning, and welcome to the sixth and final installment in our LMV3 technical training series. You've made it. I'm Aaron Zeller with SCC. I'll be the moderator for the webinar this morning, gathering your questions during the presentation for discussion at the end. Our presenter again is David Lair. David is going to cover Modbus communications of the LMV3 and how to use the ACS 410 PC software today. Dave, it's all yours. Thank you, Aaron. Good morning, everyone. As Aaron stated, you made it to the last in the series of the LMB3. Uh, let's roll into it. All right, Modbus ACS. LMB3 has a Modbus port. The physical connection to the Modbus port is made through an OCI 410 module. X92 is the Modbus port and the OCI module is plugged into that port on the LMB3. It's a small white port. You see it illustrated there in orange on the LMB3. Once you connect up that OCI, it comes with a pre-made cable that can be plugged into the module, and that takes the TTL Modbus from there to the OCI module. Then off of the ROCI module, you get RS-485 to building automation. Additionally, you're going to need to power the OCI unit with 24 volts AC or 24 volts DC. Modbus is used for touchscreens, it's used for lead lag master panels, it's used for connection to the BMS. The most common is the touchscreens on the burner series. The easiest or the uh, technical instructions here show that the easiest way to get hold of a Modbus onto your unit is to buy an SCC part number, a TS3M KT, a kit. The uh, technical instructions are on the website. It's TS1050. When you get that, you get a breaker, a 24 volt power supply, and all the terminals you need to connect. Plus, you get a wiring diagram showing you the connections for the power and for your system. It comes in a small layout. It's about seven and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. Again, the part number is TS3MKT. By that one kit, you have your power supply, you have your breakers, you have all your terminals pre-wired, and you have your OCI module. That's the best way to get Modbus onto your unit. Once you do, you're gonna have access to all the Modbus registers. They're gonna have functions and addresses, words and formats. And those are all listed in section seven of your manual. You wanna give those to your Modbus integrator so that he can write a program in the background. Or if you purchase your touchscreens or master panels from SCC, they will be all programmed for these right out of the box. Additionally, if you look at the Modbus section, you'll see some control logic, basically what happens and what kind of logic applies to the LMB3 as far as the Modbus parameter settings are concerned. ACS 450, second half of it, ACS 450 introduction. The LMB3 can be completely programmed using the AZL23 or if you want, with a PC using the ACS 410 software. Most people find the AZL23, myself included in that group, is more convenient for the ACS for a manual setup of the parameters. However, the ACS 410 has additional capabilities that you can't just get with the LMB323 and the LMB3 alone. These capabilities would be one, saving and printing, all of the LMB3 settings, combustion curves, and information in a report format. Now you have it saved to your computer and you have a nice format print that you can have a hard copy. You can save and upload entire parameter sets from a PC. You can have a backup for every single job. The AZL only holds one parameter set, two fuels, but one parameter set. And the PC can hold thousands of them in only a couple of meg of uh, storage space. They're only about 4K for storage size, very small. You can view and save trends. You can track uh, flame speed. You can track modulation when you're doing PID. 
You can view the status screen of all the LMV3 inputs and outputs. It tells you directly from the LMV3 itself if the safety loop is powered, if the gas, low gas pressure switch is powered, if the call for heat is on, what the firing rate is, your current flame signal. And you can set and visualize all the fuel air ratio curves by giving you graphs. It's sometimes it's visually much easier to see a curve than it is to see a chart with numbers in it. Your biggest decision of the day is which OCI cable to buy. The OCI comes in three different flavors. It's gonna come in a 20 user level, a 30, a service level, and a 40, an OEM level. They all look just like the picture below, but they have different capabilities. One is gonna be the cost. That's primarily gonna drive some of your purchase. Two is whether or not you can do a backup. And when you do a backup, you're gonna get the entire OEM service level, all the parameters in the backup. If you take the service level OCI, that one is the lowest cost. And for the lowest cost, you get the least features. That one is rarely sold, quite frankly, simply because you can't do a backup. If you're gonna invest in an OCI, you wanna be able to do a backup to the PC. The only benefit to having an OCI 410.20 would be that you could look at the fault history in one big splash on your screen. You could do a screen print to save it, but there's no way to back it up or anything else. You can see all the faults and you can view all the user level parameters. What you really wanna buy is a service cable. It's gonna be probably twice as expensive, but you're gonna be able to do a backup and you're gonna be able to edit and set up all the parameters that are available on an LMB3 from the service level. And when you print your report, you're gonna have all of the parameters available to print that are available at the service level. Parameters that are OEM only, such as flame signal strength, I mean, flame signal, uh, Flame failure response time. Flame failure response time is an OEM parameter. So you will not be able to adjust that with the service level OCI. And when you print the report, the value of parameter 186, flame failure response time will have dashes in it. It won't publish the parameters, but the flame failure time will be backed up and saved in the parameter set so that if you restore it to another burner or the same one, you will get all of your OEM settings. You simply can't edit them or view them in the report. And of course, the deeper your pockets, if you get an OEM level, it's about three times the cost of the service level, but you can do all of the features that you want to do with the OEM OCI. Installation, the operating system is Windows 7, 8, or 10. We, we don't have Macintosh. We download it from the SEC Combustion website. If you go to secombustion.com, you're gonna see an LMV3 for our products. Underneath the LMV3 products on the bottom, you're gonna see the ACS 410 software is downloadable. It's free, it's no charge. All you gotta do is go into the website, click on that, download it, and you get yourself a zip file of the ACS 410 software. Once the ACS 410 software has been downloaded, you wanna double click on the setup file. Actually, you want to unzip the file. And then once the file is unzipped, it's always better procedure to unzip a file. You can run it within the zip, but you have a lot less errors and a lot less issues if you unpack the zip. So unpack the zip and then double click on the setup file and it'll start the installation. And then you pick the desired options that you want. So you pick a language and then when you're prompted, you get next and then you accept the license agreement for using the software. It puts it in a folder. You can change that if you like. And then you can create an icon and have and finish it. And then you'll have the ACS 410 installed. It's pretty much follow along the prompts and it's a very painless installation. Once the ACS 410 software is complete, then a prompt, it'll prompt you to install the OCI 410 device, which is another USB device. And you have to perform an install on those as well. So the following steps on that would be to click next 
and then it clicks the OCI drivers based on your operating system and the OCI that it finds. And once they've been installed, it says finish. You select the checkbox if you want to launch it, and then you click finish. And at this point, your ACS 410 software is ready to run. It's had the software installed, and it has the drivers for the OCI included. The physical connection to the LMV3 to use the ACS 410 software, you have your LMV3, you have your PC running Windows, you have your software loaded, and you have a USB port available to you. Typically, you have the AZL plugged into your LMV3 as it operates. That would be a standard installation. That would be plugged into an RJ11 port. It's like a little telephone port on the side. You see it there highlighted in pink. And then you'll have your OCI cable that you purchased at one of the levels that you have selected. You'll plug the OCI port into the USB, I mean the OCI cable into the USB port on your PC. You'll unplug the AZL from the RJ11 port. You either run the PC or the AZL, you can't run both. And then you'll plug in the OCI cable into the same port that you just removed the AZL from. You'll click on the icon on your laptop computer, the ACS 410 icon. And then the ACS 410 software will boot up on the screen as you see in front of you. Once the ACS boots up on your screen, you're going to get a connection prompt. It's either going to be offline or online. You want to go online. See the difference on there between offline and online? Offline is when you look at a report. Online is when you actually connect to a unit. So you go online. You're going to pick a user level. In this case, we're going to pick OEM. IS is user, SO is service, and OEM is OEM. Then it'll go for a password. If you click on that little hash mark, you'll get a dialogue on there that helps you put the characters for your login in the proper case. So in this case, OEM factory default is entry. We click on E, N, T, R, Y, and then we say connect. And when you press connect, then the screen goes in and it reads in all the parameters. This takes only a minute, at most maybe two minutes. It reads in all the parameters up on the screen like that. You get a display very similar to what you're seeing right now. And then the first splash on the ACS 410 software will be this information screen you see on the upper left. We're on the very first tab, which is Info Service. Info service shows you a lot of information level parameters, what software version you have, what your date code is, uh, your, your addresses for Modbus and Ebus, your flame intensity, your current fuel, as well as a very extensive fault history. Here it's a little truncated, but you can stretch that out. And when you look at the fault history, it's very detailed. It's got 25 faults, fault number one being the current condition. In this case, it's a code 200. And if you look at the far right, you see that the system is currently error free. Previously, you see some faults with air pressure off, loss of flame, the fact that we did backups and restores, and there were some lockouts on the AZL display. So here we go through 25 faults. It gives you all the codes, all the diagnostic levels, all the classes. It tells you what phase they occurred at. It tells you what startup number it occurred at, what your firing rate was. And if you're running a dual fuel, whether you're on fuel zero or fuel one. And then it politely looks up in the back of the book and gives you the diagnostic and description of your codes. If you've ever had to fall, fetch the fault history on an LMV3, you know that can be a tedious task. And having this big splash with all the information in one fell swoop that you can print in a report is a serious advantage. The next tab is gonna be the parameter screen. We're on the second tab on the top. On the parameter screen, you can go into your 100 group. And you can double click any one of them and you can look at every individual parameter. And then you have the ability here, the ones that are available to your service or OEM, 
to click on that parameter and make changes. So this is the way you can adjust all of your parameters with the ACS 410 software. Simply by going to the parameter screen, finding the additional parameter, adjusting it, and then updating it to the LMV. Next, we go into the fuel error ratio curve and you can view your curve. This is a beautiful screen for viewing your curve. Again, when you're on your AZL, you simply get the chart on the upper left, which would be the points that are set in there for air and fuel and VSD if you have it. In this case, it's just air and fuel. And then it prints you a graphical chart, which is very nice to see. So if you had curve bumps in the road, you'd be able to see them very visually when you get a graphic output of the chart. So in this case, we have a very smooth curve, almost linear in nature. This is a pretty well-behaved burner in this example. The next tab we can go to is status. In this case, this burner is running. It's on fuel zero. It's running at 31% fire rate. The air and gas actuators are at their positions, 13, 15 degrees. The VSD isn't being used here, so standardized speed is just zero. Safety loop is made. Uh, load controller is doing a call for heat. Air pressure switches on. Fan is running, and the valves are energized. This is a live screen, and it actually gives you a status, uh, often called a dashboard. So this is your LMB3 status at a glance, using the actual inputs and outputs on the terminals to go through the software and tell you what the actual LMV3 says. It's a pretty good diagnostic tool. After status, we can look at trending. Here you can trend flame signal, actuator positions, fire rate, whatever you clock in. It's explained pretty well in the LMV3 manual, but here you could actually do your trending. On the bottom, you see a dialog box where you can pick your points that you want to track and you can pick your pitch on the curve so you can log them every second, you can log them every 10 minutes, and then you can run a log and then you can save the log and you can view the log later. So this is a nice piece of trending software that comes with the ACS 410 software. Backup and restore. This is a huge use of the uh, ACS software. In here, in this case, you see a lot of backups that have been done on this computer and it's got descriptions and date codes. It tells you the product that they're LMV3s, tells you the burner IDs and the levels we did it at. Once you back this up, you get the report and the parameter file all in one fell swoop. If you've done the LMV5, those are done individually. In the LMV3, when you do backup, you get both files automatically, the report and the parameter one when you do the backup. If you've got backups in your system, then what you can do is you can go offline. Here now we're on the dialog screen. We clicked on the top where it says login. And then we go offline instead of online. Once we're offline, we're looking at files on the PC. So once we're offline, then we can go to file and then report. And then we can select a backup in this case, I've selected one that we had in there for the webinar. And it opens it up into a full eight page report. The eight page report is very detailed. And here you can see the first page. You see, you can put a uh, title on there as you like. I happen to call this one webinar. Again, it shows you your product. This was an LMV 37, the date code of when it was manufactured. All of the settings are in there. On the next screen on the right, you see the number of faults, a little bit of history, how many hours uh, in operation, and those are resettable, how many hours this thing is run. Actually, it's only run two hours. This happens to be a demo. And then all of your load controller settings, the inputs. Parameter settings in here, we have ramp speeds. It's got the fuel actuator. It's, it's reference point is on the closed. It's running a counterclockwise rotation. Next to the right, you see a VSD settings and high and low limit trims if you had the VSD trim activated. It also gives a printout of the entire fault history. This is a great file to have in your job folder at the office. Customer calls you up, it's Mercy Hospital. 
and you pull this thing up, you know exactly what his fault history is. You know his equipment, you know what uh, servos he's running, whether they're uh, high torque or low torque. He's running what scanner he's running, and all of the data is available before you even leave the office. On the right here, we have a lot of the times we're using, such as the pre-purge time, safety times, interval times, post-purge times, and the like. And then it'll give you some operating mode parameters that you have there, as well as your fuel curve, again, in a chart and in a graph. And on the top, you're gonna to see your basic special position settings, your, your home position, which is your no load position, your pre-purge positions, and your post-purge positions. Resources. You can use the LMB3 tech instructions. It outlines everything that I've shown you here today in much more detail. And additionally, when you download the ACS 450 software, you get a PDF manual, which gives you extensive piece-by-piece -piece information on how to run the ACS 410 software, in addition to this webinar, in addition to the LMB3 tech instructions. I think that should do it for now. We'll take questions and answers. Back to you, Aaron. All right, Dave, thank you. Very good job, I appreciate that. Um, covered a lot of good material there. And we got a few good questions that came in during that presentation. So let's jump right into it. Uh, the first one is, do I need to use a PC to commission an LMV3? And I think you touched on this, but it might be good to explain a little bit further and in more detail. Aaron, um, that's a great question. Uh, one of the beauties of the Siemens products is that you can do all the commissioning and uh, fault history and everything else with the AZL displays. That covers the LMB3 product, the LMB5 product, LMB7. <clears throat> can always be done locally with just the local display. That's a serious advantage. But you can additionally do it with a PC, it's just not required. Again, the benefits of the PC is being able to do backups and restores and generate the reports or perhaps do some trending or more extensive data. So the PC is a definite added benefit, and the beauty of it is it's not required. Yeah, very good. I would say, I think you mentioned this briefly, your preference is to program an LMV3 using the AZL. Uh, that's my personal preference as well. But there are colleagues of ours who like the PC who prefer to do it that way. And so it certainly is up to the user in terms of what tools they've got available and what preference they like to, uh, to lean towards. Um, that's entirely that's entirely correct. I highly prefer using the AZL simply because it's quicker and faster. But if you're going to go take a look at your fuel curve, you can't beat having that graphic. And that can be there when you can actually commission a curve on the PC as well. And you can see when trends start to go awry and they start to go nonlinear. So it's a definite benefit to do it on the PC if you happen to possess the patience. <laughs> Good point. All right, how about uh, the next question that came in is, can the AZL store backups like the software can? Yes, the AZL can store a backup. So if you're running an LMB37, it stores all the data into the AZL. It can be restored into a replacement unit. Or if you do a tune-up or anything happens like that and you ever want to go back on the last save, you can also restore it. Or you can re restore it to an additional new unit when you go to replace the uh, module on the particular burner that you're doing, or very conveniently, if you're doing multiple units on a job, you can do the first burner and completely commission it, and then download it to boiler number two, three, and four, and then basically add your analyzer and do touch-ups on the curves. The AZL can only back up one burner, albeit two fuels, if it happens to be a dual fuel burner but only one burner. The ACS software can back up thousands of them and you can have one of every single job that you that you look after or have to maintain. So definitely it's the volume of backups you can have on the ACS versus the single one on the AZL. Yeah, great point. All right, and the last question then goes back to the beginning of the presentation about Modbus. Are there other communication protocols available besides Modbus on the LMV? Glad you asked that. Uh, the protocol coming off of the Siemens products is always going to be Modbus 
And we do have uh, an e-bus option, which is uh, rarely used. So Modbus is far and away the most common, but there are many applications that use TCP IP or ethernet in, in, uh, protocols or uh, Lonworks and uh, BACnet. All those have to be done through protocol converters. Once you fetch the Modbus data, you take it to a protocol converter and then you can go to all these other systems. Those protocol converters are available by through various channels. Uh, the most, uh, the best channel is through SCC and we sell protocol converters um, for our screens and for any other application that you have. So you can bring it up through Modbus and then add a protocol converter and then you can have BACnet available to your building automation. All right, very good. Thank you, David. Uh, that appears to be all the questions we got for this morning. So uh, we'll wrap it up. Thank you to each of you for joining us today and for those of you who, who joined us throughout the entire series, series, excuse me. We aimed to make you an expert with the LMV3 system through this series. If you're not confident of your expertise just yet, you can always go back and view these webinars anytime you like on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for SCC Inc. Or feel free to contact our tech support team uh, by phone at 224-366-8445, where you'll get David or one of his colleagues on the tech support team to give you personal one-on-one -on -one help over the phone. But before you do that, please make sure you have a copy of the LMV3 technical instructions handy. Uh, when you call with those instructions, we can be a lot more help to you. So thank you again. Uh, really appreciate your time and hope you all have a great week.